Hi, my name is Karen Holmes. I'm the founder and director of the World Peace Organization for the One World Government. And I'm here again coming to you from my warehouse, the, my shipping department. And this is where, where I, I sent out my, my books that I have channeled. Uh, my books are channeled messages from God on how to overcome any crisis. A long time ago at the prayer circle in, in May and December of 1999, uh, Seth came to me and we channeled two books. One was a manual for peace, the other one was a manual for the one world government. And he said, I, I've told you in a previous video that, that he said that a million people had to be in the right time and place and frame of mind for the books to go forward. But now what I wanted to do today was to share with you something about, about the economy and how you can start to create a, a business. Okay. Lots of people <clears throat> have gone on to uh, GoDaddy uh, and Amazon and have started small businesses. And I'd like to share with you some information about what I had gotten about about how to start a small business under the circumstances. The, <coughs> the excuse me, the economy is not good. The, the, uh, the government is being forced to pay large sums of money for stimulating the economy because of the stagnation related to COVID-19 <coughs> and the other like existential threats that we're facing it's like we're facing curses because of this past life, or uh, all these, um, not past, yeah, past life issues, but also because of the cycles lining up. It's like we're all, we're, we're hitting all of these major problems right at the same time. And I've gone into this in previous videos. It's not, this is not something that I need to dwell on today at all. But what is happening is that that, that we've relied on businesses, uh, let's say young people get a job um, and then they kind of work their way up in jobs and things like that and then they hit the point where, you know, they can't work hard enough or they're not making enough money, or they're underemployed or unemployed or whatever. When the economy um, hits a, a crisis situation, what exactly can you do at that point in time? You fall back to your talents and gifts. But then you have to figure out how to start a business associated with that. Today I wanted to share with you uh, something that our initial uh, uh, prayer circles talked about a long time ago, back a, a long time ago. Okay. Basically they said, Archangel Michael came to us one time and he said, he, he, I was channeling him. That was my first time that I had channeled Archangel Michael in in, a, in a, the first prayer circle. And he came to us and he said, okay, God offers you, the God, the creator of us all, offers you your life on a silver platter. How much of that are you willing to accept? And people were going, you know, why would anybody not accept the full 100%? You know, that, that's, that's silly, you know, that's, that's kind of a no-brainer question. But then, the you know when they ask no-brainer questions those are those are the let's say the brainer type questions where you really have to sit and figure this out for yourself because it's going to probably take the rest of your life to do it okay so what what he said then was how much okay so how do you interpret that idea okay so basically what happens is that we are third dimensional beings and as third dimensional beings, we, we function, the third dimension as spiritual people know, is also called the illusion. So we function within an illusion. Now think of how the, the illusion functions. You know, we go along and they talk about death and taxes, but what happens if people died? What causes people to die? And were taxes always necessary? You know, were they, 
you know, did the caveman have taxes? You know, you, we know that the Romans had taxes, you know. Render unto Caesar, unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and render unto God what is God's. You know, so what we have right now is we have a, to get the 100%, I'm going to use the idea of the banquet table that's in the Bible, and the third dimension is like, we're like dogs under the banquet table fighting over the crumbs that, that come off of it. And sometimes the crumbs are really big. You know, you can, you can be fighting over something that's a hundred billion dollars a crumb and you know you're going to invest in something that's going to bring you a, a, a return on investment that's going to be huge. So how about how about fighting over the control of like say um, Apple or over um, uh, Microsoft or whatever. You know these are big ideas. People are fighting for crumbs that have fallen off. They they play power games that's based on weaving an illusion. Okay, so games are weaving, there's seven games that people play the seven deadly sins. Now, how does this have to do with business? Okay, so in other words, what, what we're doing is we're looking at a way for people to create something that's unique, um, something that isn't just going to be a competition on Amazon, for example, over who you know, you have a three cents lower on on some product that somebody else is selling and you're undercutting them and doing things like that. You know, selling on Amazon isn't necessarily the answer. What you want is something that is totally unique, something that only you can can do. So what is it that that is so unique that allows people to do this? Okay, so now that's how Archangel Michael kind of, I'm going to share it now with this idea. So the third dimension is kind of like a paradigm shift. This is like a paradigm shift. You go along and we're evolving. And then what happens is you reach the point where, let's say you can't, you're unemployed, underemployed, the economy's collapsed, and you're trying to figure out what you can do. And you have to, most people at that point in time fall back onto their talents and gifts. So then what happens is, so what happens if you're a carpenter? I'll share a little story with you. I, I used to enjoy doing woodworking. I took a woodworking class in, in, um, for uh, like adult education and I loved woodworking. I, I, made, um, I made one of my tables, I made uh, um, a jewelry box out of oak and ebony and had it all little tiny things that I found a pattern for. I, I enjoy woodworking. After I finished doing the, the woodworking in my, my ebony and oak box, I had, I had the original plans called for one thing and, and then I, had, I didn't have access to that type of wood so I changed it and then I had to change the whole design because it's really hard to create an, an OG in oak. You know, it just doesn't work very well. At least I had problems doing it with the school's stuff. So, so I figured out how many, for me to make a living comparable to what I had as a dental hygienist, how many jewelry boxes would I have to make and how could I mass produce them and then how could I come up with my own idea and I figured out I'd well I didn't I just estimated basically that I'd have to come up compared to this I'd have to I have to come up with thousands of dollars charge a thousand dollars for just one jewelry box and I didn't think anybody was really going to do that so you see you have to come up with your talents and gifts but woodworking was not my my thing because there are so many really good woodworkers out there I just appreciate really nice woodworking when I see it and I still know the difference between a rabbit and a dado okay Okay, so now what, what we're talking about is what can you do that's unique? And so, so think about you you're have a job and you're going along, you're working at a Walmart store, for example, and you get into the trap that you, you 
have, have an apartment, you have a car, and your payments are a certain amount and you have to keep on working, and you can't transition to that. Now, you can't get your life, really, by working for somebody else. Now, I'm some people do. I'm, I'm not making this a blank, blanket statement. But what happens is you have to be able to make a, like a paradigm shift out of the idea that you're going to climb the ladders of success, um, maybe in a, in a corporation and fight over that, that corner office. Because as you're fighting, you're proving that you're not um, executive material, possibly. Okay. So you, you make it based on, you can't do it by third dimensional ideas, but then you have to figure out how this paradigm shift works. And then you have to do, this is the four, third, this is third dimension, this is fourth dimension, and this is the fifth dimension. And the life that you want that Archangel Michael promised us all at the prayer circle, how much of it are you going to accept is up on the fifth dimension. So you have to start functioning as a fifth dimensional person. So this is a paradigm shift in your thinking. You, you can't really get there, but you can start to function that way by understanding the difference between the parad this uh, paradigm shift. Okay, so that is where you want to be to get the 100%. Down here, now, I have a warehouse, for example. So Archangel Michael at that first prayer circle said to us, what do you have in abundance? Okay, this is how you kind of know because your subconscious all along has been telling you that where you are up here is something you've been preparing for all your life. Okay, so I have a friend who used to live just down the road a little bit here and in an apartment up, up right up there this is a warehouse in a in a like a strip mall and he used to live in an apartment above a store right over here and he he loved to bake he he was very proud of his baking and what he did was he would go he didn't make a lot of money bake baking and working in restaurants and things like that not compared to what he could have made if he started his own business and he knew how to do that. So what did he have in abundance? What he had been doing all along is collecting the tools that he needed to do his, to start his business. He was, he would go to the dollar store and get those, those uh, dollar pie pans and then he started his own small business baking let's say putting a notice out for pies that he made for the holidays things like that you see he started out with the idea of what he loved to do what he was willing to do and he already had a, a sense of abundance on the things that he loved to do yeah and he he wasn't like me giving up woodworking now why would, but you know, those things that you try out, like woodworking, I, I may not have anything to do with it, but woodworking is still a, a talent and gift that I have developed that allows me to do certain things down the road. So as we, as we travel and we do things and we try things out, you need to kind of like keep on following the hunches and the things that you like to do. Uh, the worst thing you can do is just go to work and then come home and not do anything. Okay, so follow, follow your hunches. When I was growing up, my dad had shoes and I, I loved to shine shoes. And then I found out I loved to shine his shoes. That was the fun thing for me to do. So w w when I got my stimulus check from the government, and, last spring the first thing I bought I thought I'm going to stimulate the economy I had been watching shoes how videos on YouTube on how to shine shoes okay why would I need to shine shoes why would I need to learn how to shine shoes that was because because the people that I know are the kind of people that don't wear Oxfords that don't wear um, really nice leather shoes were more likely to wear 
uh, sandals or or uh, Nike kind of shoes, running shoes. I wear hiking boots sometimes because it's it's something that allows me to walk easier. Okay, I've went, worn hiking boots for a long time. And so all of a sudden I'm going, I'm watching these videos on YouTube on how to shine shoes. Okay, so these, these are things that in the future my guides told me that I needed to have an understanding about taking care of shoes and on how to protect them fine leather type shoes. So I've been watching videos and I got shoe polish and I got um, the a kit for for taking care of leather shoes. I know now how to do that better than I did with my dad's shoes when I was a little girl. So that was a that was something where the spiritual hierarchy had put something in my mind at that time. I like to do it and then now it's something that's in the future. So you have all these little clues that have been given to you along the way and the whole idea is to kind of like put them into a a, a structure that allows you to understand this. Okay, I like to I like to cook. I'm a really rotten cook. I like to cook. I like to bake. But I'm really bad at it. So how, why would that happen? Okay, so at the prayer circle, the first thing they, the, my guides to, asked me to do was to create a cookbook. I've been collecting recipes all my life. So, so what? I had an abundance of recipes. So why would I do that? So the spiritual hierarchy, everybody else was collecting, figuring out what project they wanted to do, and I didn't have an idea. They asked me to do a cookbook. Okay? Hey, great! I love to do it. I, I have I have a million recipes that I, I've gathered and I don't know what to do with. I can make a cookbook. So I sat down for maybe two or three weeks and I was kind of figuring out recipes and what to do and things like that. And then I thought, you know, why did they ask me to do this? And then, so I asked, and they said, because you're going to be having dinners for the, the Supreme Court justices, the senators, and the President of the United States. And all of a sudden I was going, oh my God, it was too big, it was too, me, having dinner for the President of the United States? How could that be? Because I'm a channel. And it was part of the work that I was going to be doing. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to get dressed up from this point here to the point where I can have dinner parties for the president, group channeling sessions. I'm going to have to get up as part of the work that I'm doing for world peace and have with other channels explain to them how to solve the problems. Have They can ask, um, about what would Thomas Jefferson do, because I can channel Thomas Jefferson. My gift from God is to be able to communicate with anyone on the other side. So I'm going to be doing dinner parties where Thomas Jefferson comes in and it talks to people, talks to the members of Congress, uh, the senators, the Supreme Court justices, and the President of the United States, all three branches basically, um, on how to solve their problems. Okay. Dinner parties, nice shoes, okay, group channeling sessions. You see what I'm doing? It's kind of like I didn't have to be a dental hygienist, but all along as I was growing up, I was collecting ideas. I was I was being being motivated by something on the back of my mind, my my spiritual guidance that okay, you like to cook. Okay, now Dinner, everyday dinners, hey, I, you know, I'm more likely to get something and just not worry about anything. I, I, that doesn't concern me at all. I'm, I'm had, I've had to pay attention to that because for my health issues, I need to find a balanced diet, okay? But when it comes to cooking for a feast, I love that. I love doing like um, the the 
the pastries, the baking, um, coming up with like the special ideas. I these are what all my recipes are for. I have I have boxes this high that I've collected of recipes, and now I get to to share them with other people and work with other people who are going to do the same thing. And we're going to help straighten out, to purify the legal system, which um, when I started the organization, that's what it allowed me to do. So now what's happening is I'm, I've made the paradigm shift that I can get my life, but I can't get it by, by playing the games. I cannot fight, basically. I cannot break universal law. I have to apply all of these things that God has put in my, the back of my mind, and that allows me to make this paradigm shift up to the higher levels. Okay, then actually doing it. Okay, the one problem that people had, as I said, when they started to do their projects is like me going from from being in a warehouse and st starting my business my books and things like that i have to create my reputation i have to do that but then what happens is i have to actually apply all the information and the planning process is where that comes in okay if you if you know the root cause of a, a crisis with the planning process you can solve the problem so I've had to do the planning process, and that involves coming up with my plan. I have created, a, I have a notebook that has all the plan information in it. Okay, so this is based on my, my business, my, my nonprofit organization is based on my talents and gifts. I stand on the principles of doing this, but then I have to create I have my vocation and my avocation. I'm a channel and I sell my books, but my vocation is my nonprofit organ or avocation, which is what basically I've done for free for the last 20 years, 20 some years. And this I have to be, my vocation is what is based on my talents and gifts. Both are based on my talents and gifts. But this is where I can make a, a cash, create a cash flow so I don't need to have a job. I don't have. I don't want to depend on Social Security. And then, this is my nonprofit organization. I can use my talents and gifts and share with other people. Half the money that I get from this goes to support this. And that means that I can just do both things. This, my nonprofit, basically helps me to solve the problems in my life because I'm a Sagittarius and Sagittarians are mutable. We're easy to kind of like, like, we're not, we're not really forceful people. We're not type A personalities, basically. But at the same time, when, when we stand on our principles, we, we're pretty immovable objects, okay? So anyway, what, I, what this is, is I have to deal with conflict resolution the, when you come up with a plan that benefits everyone, what you're doing is you're solving a problem based on your talents and gifts. You've worked all your life, like I said, you've been collecting ideas, but you've learned lessons during that period of time that allow you to solve problems. So let's say that what you have is in your life, you see this big dark cloud ahead of you, it's on the horizon. And if you can solve the problems associated with that, then you start working towards it, you solve the problem, you come up with a plan, and when it hits that point in time, you can keep on going, but somebody has to come in and like agree to that idea. Okay, so that happened to me a long time ago when somebody agreed to the, this idea and started to kick this around, this idea. So as, as it was kind of like going this big mass, my, my plan addressed the root cause of that, the power games that people play on the third dimension, okay? We're, we're pulling the earth up through this paradigm shift so that everybody is creating the life they want up there. This is the banquet table up there. Okay. The banquet table 
basically is the promise that Noah gave to, or that God gave to Noah in the form of the rainbow. And the rainbow is, is like a symbol of a promise, but it's also the planning process that you take to solve, to solve the problems that you have. We didn't know how to solve the problems. That's what happened to the people who were in my prayer circle who didn't survive. They didn't know. We didn't have the planning process yet. We didn't make it. They didn't make it up to the fifth dimension where they were actually creating the life they wanted. They didn't make it to the to be on the rainbow. And that's what my 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 um, bookstore is called, on the rainbow peace store. It's the banquet table that's basically the fifth dimension where people are creating the life they want. So basically, if if everything starts to fall apart in the economy, don't worry about it. Understand that you have all of these things that have been given to you. Understand that you have your talents and gifts. Understand that God has already prepared that way for you to go. All you have to do is kind of like bring everything together, understand what your talents and gifts are, and then create something that is unique. And you don't have to even do that because at, at the prayer circles, and the, I'm supposed to start a crisis center too, that'll help people to understand what that is. And then, so people can see what it is that they can create. And then if you see that dark cloud on the horizon, and this is, that's where you, and if you have a solution that can solve that problem, because you've, you've gained wisdom and because you've solved that all along during your experience, the wisdom you've gained at all those jobs that you've taken, then, then you come up with a plan that benefits everyone. And then what you have, you have your unique idea. If I take, you see, what makes you unique is your talents and gifts that have, you've been given by God, the creator of us all. So, so let's say that if I, take, if I take two proven ideas, the Constitution, our, the U.S. Constitution, and the principles of the cooperation of nature, those are two open source ideas. And then you, you um, I put them into every country on the planet. There are 200 countries now. Eventually, there'll be 500 countries. If we put the U.S. Constitution and the principles, economic principles of the cooperation nature into every single one of those countries, eventually what would happen at the end of 100 years, there'd be 200 to 500 different, different interpretations of that based on the, the cultural idea behind that, the unique culture, the who they are and their talents and gifts and what they're good at. So basically, these are open source ideas that anybody can take and come up with plans. So the spiritual hierarchy gave me, they gave me like 50 ideas that, that are like open source ideas. And the, are, I'm going to turn them like techno technological ideas. I'm going to turn them over to the technology team to carry them. I can, I can open them up to debate, which helps me and my organization. But then the next group of people are the independent members. And that allows them and the technology team to function on a higher level. And then when they take those ideas, by sharing them with other people, once, once we turn them over to the governments, then the technology, the principles are open source to everybody. Everybody can do it. They can't be stolen because they're open source. But at the same time, what makes them unique is how, like in the United States, because we're a melting pot of cultures and religions, we approach this idea differently than a country say Saudi Arabia, which is very, very unique in terms of who they are. The Saudis are very unique. You know, the British are very unique. Every country and culture is very unique. And how they choose to express their culture is unique. And that's one of the things we're going to, to demonstrate at the conference in Europe. So what, what makes you unique 
are your talents and gifts that are given to you by God, but also all the experiences that you've had, all the wisdom that you've gained on solving problems because you do it every day. How about being a mom? Um, you can do that, but there are moms all over the place, so that's kind of an open source idea. But how do you solve a problem like that? How about if you are a mother and you have breast cancer and you introduce a cure for breast cancer because you understand how to solve that problem based on this idea of the root cause of breast cancer. Okay? So you come up with a program that, that helps women, maybe a program that helps them find out, figure out how to nurture the nurture um, stepchildren. Okay, because you speak from your own experience. And that's where it is right now, is the, the economy is in bad shape right now. The government has taken a great deal of money and put it into the, the stimulating the economy. The only problem with it is, is that they're going to be cutting social programs. And this is a, a um, prophecy that we got at the prayer circle years ago, that their government is going to cut social programs. What happens then is that the private sector has to start assuming responsibility for solving these problems. But then the government's programs were never really there they're solving problems. Basically, there were a bunch of people who got together and they said, well, we're either going to throw money at it or we're going to put pork barrel legislation on it. We're going to pass this. We're going to compromise. We're going to do this. You know, it was never really based on the root cause of the problem. So while the government programs were coming like this, then you can solve the same problem by by coming up with this plan that solves a problem based on your talents and gifts. So this is your opportunity. Now, God gives us the opportunity, the capacity, and the equality to be able to create the life we want. So each of us has all of these things available to us. And it's just this idea of a paradigm shift that you can't get your life by getting revenge on somebody. You need to work with people. You need to figure out how to start working with people. And that's where what I'm learning about now is conflict resolution. Because as soon as you come up with a plan, then there's going to be people who are going to say, no, we don't like that. And then you have to figure out how to deal with the people who, who are going to work to undermine what you're doing. World peace. Hey. Everybody, I thought everybody would love this idea of world peace, and then I realized, hey, there are a lot of people that make money by building bombs. You know, so I had to come up with all my planning steps that allow that to happen. Okay, so you're going to love the planning process, and you're going to hate the planning process, because it's going to make you stop and think and work, and you're going to spend the rest of your life working on this project. So don't start anything until you're ready to do that. Don't start it until you're ready to make the steps and the commitment that you have to do. I started out with a cookbook. I'm still collecting recipes. My cookbook, I hate to say it, my cookbook isn't done yet. I, it's been 20 some years and my cookbook isn't done yet. But I'm learning how to cook and I go to I go to uh, the Goodwill and I buy pots and pans. I have so, I can cook for so many people you wouldn't believe it. Feasts, you know? So you're going to be doing the same thing. You're going to have your, your vocation and your avocation. And that is how you help. When you have your avocation, the money that you get from your vocation can support this. But then you're going to bring together other people to help you create your nonprofit organization or your, vo uh, your avocation. And as you do that, you'll all have the same, same interests. You'll all be working together. And that's when you start, when you start to function from your own capacity, then you start to bring together people with tolerance. And that is when, when you do that, then the people who are opposing you 
they followed you around on the planning circle and they are opposing you now and they start becoming part of the support level of it. That is how you stop stop the op opposition. Okay, so I, I just encourage you to start to think about what you can do based on your talents and gifts. You know, starting, starting a, a business on Amazon and having to undercut people or whatever to, to get that extra three cents, you know, that you're saving, you know, or whatever. You know, eventually that's not going to work anymore. In fact, there's a possibility that the internet is going to be undermined because of this. So, so figure out what you can do. Come up with um, the information. I'll talk about the planning process some other time. But it, if you don't have the planning process and you don't have the root cause of the problem, then it's going to be hard for you to function up here and to accept the 100% that God offers you. This is a whole new paradigm shift. This is not, this is not something that any, nobody's functioning on that level yet. None of us are functioning down here in the third dimension and functioning up there. It's starting to, starting to come into people's awareness, but it's, it has to take this paradigm shift to make it happen. It's all there, but you haven't seen it. And in, in my videos, I'm going to talk more about how to start a business. Okay? I'll share with you what I'm doing with mine. My books are channeled messages from God on how to overcome any crisis. And these are examples of my books that I do. Right now, I'm editing the books. This is Out of the Abyss and Into Life. I'm not going to flip this video. This is Unraveling the Past. I did this out of the abyss and into life with Thomas Aquinas. Actually, the series is this. This is The Power of Conquest. I did that with Alexander of Macedonia. He was a great conqueror. Now he's sharing his information on the power of conquest. Okay, I did this with Queen Sophie. It's called Unraveling the Past. This is an important tool that you have. And it's, uh, I did this with Queen Sophie of the Netherlands. I never even heard of Queen Sophie of the Netherlands until she came and tapped me on the shoulder and said she wanted to do a book with me. And then this is Out of the Abyss and Into Life, and I did this with Thomas Aquinas. So these are the books that I am working on, editing, getting them ready for amateur quality books so I can work with my independent members. I, uh, by me doing my books, then that allows them to follow behind me and do the same thing. The people from the prayer circle who passed away because we didn't have the planning, planning, planning process then, you know, these people now are able to deal with the planning process and function on a higher level too. And then as they do that, then they can start working on their own projects too. Okay, so I hope that you share this. I ask that you share this with your family and friends especially the people that you know who are, are looking uh, for a way to create a cash flow, uh, to create a small business, to create a, um, a, something that they can do. Um, and maybe they're not, they're willing to make the change, but they're not maybe going about it on a way that is going to help them do that, you know. Um, share this with other people, open it up for debate, and do it yourself. Then demonstrate how it's done. Okay, and then share and like and subscribe. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for coming and letting me share this information because the world needs this information. Thanks.